Thank you for joining us for the Two Minute Drills. Behind the camera, this is Aram Talegian, San Gabriel Valley Newspaper Group football writer. Joined by, on your left, San Gabriel Valley Newspaper Group, Jack of All Trades, Steve Ramirez. And on his right, or I should say your right, San Gabriel Valley Tribune Prep Sports Editor, Fred J. Robledo. Guys, it's playoff time. It's playoff time in the Pac-5. First round home game, Freddie, for Bishop Amat coming up on Friday night against Tesoro. Let's get it started off. Tesoro comes out of the South Coast League. They're seven and three this year. Their losses are to Chino Hills, Fred. Uh huh. All right, yeah, just 14, making sure. 15. Just making sure you remember that. <laughs> uh, and in league, then to San Clemente and Mission Viejo. So this team is obviously no slouch. Yeah, and they're a team that beat Santa Margarita early in the season too, Aaron. Um, you know, Bishop Amat coming off last week's loss, Steve, undefeated all year. I thought it was a game that everything could go wrong against them, went wrong against them. Um, but I think they're pretty fortunate to get the number four seed. But uh, Tesoro's not, you know, I know they're at home and they haven't lost a game at home in three years. But this Tesoro mm-hmm. team is, is they're, they're the real deal. Um, mm-hmm. I was talking to Coach Haggerty. I actually talked to their coach, too, Brian Barnes, this morning. Both coaches mm-hmm. agree that this defensive front they have is for real. You know, they start nine sophomores. Mm-hmm. Coach Haggerty said it's the best one that they'll have seen all year. And even uh, their coach, Barnes, said that by the time this group is seniors, they could be one of the best teams in the country. So that's what they're mm-hmm. up against, a team that's really youthful, a mm-hmm. team that we've seen can can play really uh, good teams and play mm-hmm. with them. But they're also, you see them Chino Hills being young, sometimes that works against you also. Yeah, I mean, it's just life in the, in the Pac-10 playoffs. I mean, there, there's just Pac no easy five game. Or Pac-5, sorry. Yeah, baby. I'm, okay, yeah, <laughs> Pac-5, uh, you know, there's just no easy game. I mean, this team is, is uh, you know, like like you said, they have some big wins, and their losses are against teams that, uh, you know, that could go on and, and, right. and, and be in contention for, for CIA playoffs. But Amat, um, you know, I, it just depends how, if, if Amat can put last week's uh, uh, heartbreak loss behind them. I think they can, yeah. and... Um, um, the options they have is going to give to Soro problems. Right. I think if you're a Bishop Amat fan and you look at last week's game, even though they lost, you feel pretty good about it because of the things that happen. I mean, they give up two touchdowns the last 40 seconds. You know, they have a screen that goes for a fumble that probably really uh, should have been real dead. That's a touchdown. There's 21 points right there. I think Amat's feeling good about their situation. I mean, regardless of what happened, getting a number four seed, whether it was a four or three seed, it really doesn't matter. They're going to be at home where they haven't lost. And one break they're going to get, uh, Nate Tago, the, the, uh, one of the running backs for Tesoro, he broke his foot two weeks ago. He probably isn't going to play. And if you noted, they lost their last two games, though one of them was to, to powerful Mission Viejo. They played pretty tough. They also lost Brandon Cody, a fullback. He tore his ACL in Friday's loss. That's going to hurt them. Matt Adams, their quarterback, is pretty good. But they do have a guy here, Sean O'Grady, a defensive end, who everybody's raving about. This guy's going to Arizona State. Right. So Bishop Mott's going to have their problems because they love to run the ball. And I think everything mm-hmm. that they do, Steve, is designed mm-hmm. to start with the oh, run, right. opens yeah. up the passing game. If they have a defensive front this active, mm-hmm. that could present problems. All right, let's get right into prediction, guys. Um, and I'll start. He didn't let you follow up, Steve. Oh, did you, did you no, have no, some? Right. Yeah. I learned something about transitioning. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, Bishop Mott, I have to feel that, that Haggerty put a charge into these guys this week week mm-hmm. um and when you talk about Tesoro Freddie I mean yeah you know they're a big roster team they, they bring a lot of people with them um they are a tough they are a gritty team but to me they're just not dynamic enough to come up to La Puente and get a win in this type of game they're going to play good defense but good defense isn't going to be enough usually in the playoffs Amat will play good defense I think Amat's defense against Tesoro's offense is going to be a big edge to Amat and Amat will eventually find points yeah. I'm looking at something like 24 to 7 or 10 for Bishop Amat. I think you're crazy. And I don't know what dynamic means when you're talking about that. I think it plays. They can't in, throw. I think it plays <laughs> in their hands, though, that they're they're youthful. And sometimes you come into this situation, you don't know any better. You're just a young team. It's not like your seniors, and you feel like this is my this is going to be my last game. They're coming in here. Obviously, they faced teams like Bishop Amat before. I mean, you look at you look at their schedule in their division. This is nothing they haven't faced before. Yeah, but they're, they put up a, six points against, like, San Clemente and seven points against Mission Viejo. They can't mm-hmm. score. Again, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. They're talking not dynamic. Two, two, really, you, you talk about Mission Viejo. That's a very, very yeah, of good course. team. Aaron. Well, Amat can play defense, too. Uh, but, but, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I do think, you know, those two guys that we mentioned that are injured, that's going to that's gonna play a big part. But I do wonder about that front seven everyone keeps talking about. And will uh, Jalen Moore be able to run the ball? Will he be able to pound? He's gotten 100 yards 
in just mm-hmm. about every game. But what I do like is that Almont's passing game with mm-hmm. with Wallace Gonzalez and Rio. Everything, <laughs> everything. No, it, it it really is coming together despite what happened last week. Now they won't have uh, Zachary Shea. I talked mm-hmm. to Coach Haggard this morning. He's going to be out another week. Uh, he says it's one of the worst ankle sprains he's ever seen. I don't know what his condition is going to be like the rest of the playoffs, but mm-hmm. they've done fine without him. Uh, again, I think Bishop Watt's going to be okay Friday, but I, I think it's going to be a tough game, Steve. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to come down to you. Like you said, um, um, Tesoro's uh, defensive line, um, and if, if um, Amat can throw the ball, I think they may try to throw the ball a, a little bit more just to open things up. Yeah. But if Tesoro can put pressure on them without having the blitz, um, that's going to be to their advantage, but I just think uh, uh, Bishmont just, ha- just has too many options yeah. there. I mean, how the heck did uh, Chino Hills beat this team 14-13? Well, I tr- keep trying to tell you that, Fred. Chino Hills can play defense, too, and, and once again, when you can play defense against a team that doesn't have much offense, which is to sort of... they play a lot of defense against Claremont the following Well, week, so. I understand that, but Claremont probably has a better offense yeah. than Tesoro does. I'm telling you, you know, they're it's not funny, dynamic. Right? We were talking to in those coaches. When I, was, I was talking to uh, Coach Bub, kind of he talked about, you know, yeah. it was one of those everything that could go wrong against them against Claremont. Yeah. Same thing with Tesoro. When I was asking about that Chino Hills kind of an everything could go wrong scenario turnover since right. that's why you can't always look at okay. scores. This well. team this team is legit. <laughs> uh Amat's gonna have its hands full and for those that don't know, if they win this game, they'll be on the road in the second round no matter what, whether All it's right. Modern Day or Long Beach Poly. So Fair enough. It up. That's that's when I'll start to wonder about Amat, that 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 difficult second round where where they've had trouble through the years recently. Um, but there you have it. We're all picking Amat. Fred's got it close, Steve's got it a little close. I don't have it very close at mm-hmm. all. Um Get out there to Kiefer on Friday night to Soro 7-3 and three at Bishop Amat to the Pac-5 By first the way, round. I, I picked Bishop Amat. I don't think you even... Uh, yeah, I did. did yeah. You, I you said like you picked yeah, Bishop yeah. Amat, okay. but he close, that. No, which isn't going to make you any friends, Fred. <laughs> close games don't win you friends at Amat. Uh, so, so give Freddie a hard time out there, Amat Nation. All right, uh, enjoy the game. Like I said, Friday night at Bishop Amat, 7 o'clock kick, Pac-5 first round. 7.30. Oh, 7.30. Is it 7.30? Yeah, okay, yeah. 7.30. They, they, they kept the 7.30 kickoff. Fair enough. It's like, it's like how it used to be. All right, enjoy it, everybody.